Thank you, Madam Chairman, Velasquez, Ranking Member Chabot, members of the House Committee on Small Business, thank you for holding this critically important hearing on the impact of high food prices on small businesses. The current crisis has greatly impacted my business. I hope that today we can explore realistic solutions to the current situation. My name is Frank D. Formica, an Italian-American baker, proudly continuing over a century of family tradition in the baking industry. I am the owner of Formica Brothers Bakery in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Over the past 92 years, millions of customers have eaten sub sandwiches and bread made from Formica Brothers Bakery, including Frank Sinatra, The Beatles, Jay-Z, and Garth Brooks, to name a few. On behalf of myself and the American Bakers Association, I appreciate this opportunity to highlight the critical status of our economy and the epidemic that is afflicting bakers and our customers across the country. In my case, over a century of family tradition is at risk of becoming extinct. The Formica Brothers legacy began over 100 years ago in the year 1900 when my grandfather, Francesco, and my grandmother, Rosa, emigrated from Sicily, Italy, and realized their American dream by building Formica's Bakery in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I grew up baking Italian bread alongside my grandfather, my father, and uncles, and today we produce 40,000 pieces of bread a day, creating roughly 200 different varieties of handcrafted European breads, which are sold both wholesale and retail in the greater Atlantic City market. And yes, I'm one of the vendors he tries to get down, but I don't deserve him. <laughs> Our daily retail base of over 500 retail customers and 300 wholesale customers and roughly 55 families who work for our bakery depend on Formica staying in business, a responsibility that I do not take lightly, and now one, quite frankly, that keeps me awake at night. Let me share a couple of examples of how the current conditions are impacting Formica's and our customers. Formica's uses 50,000 pounds of flour a week. The price of flour had been relatively stable over a 20 to 30 year period between about 11 and 17 cents, an average of 14 cents. Starting in September of 2007, the price jumped uh, until it reached a peak, a peak of over 60 cents a pound. What did that mean for me? A year ago, we paid $7,000 a week, $364,000 a year for flour. Today, we're paying $20,000 a week, $1,040,000 a year for the same amount of flour. In addition to flour and all other ingredients have substantially increased. On top of the ingredients, the cost of distributing our products has soared, further threatening my business and livelihood of the families, my family and my family and my employees, are the fact that we use 600 gallons of fuel oil to deliver gasoline to our wholesale customers. Last year, those costs averaged 1,200 a week, 62,000 a year. This year, it's 2,000 a week as we speak. $104,000 a year. In addition to the increased cost of flour and fuel, we've seen prices increase in the entire inventory and products and services that we depend on to run our business. We have been able to pass on some of these increases to our customers through higher prices, but we absorbed the majority of the cost, which has crushed our profit margin, a profit margin that I'm fighting to keep above water for the first time in 92 years, and that includes the years of the Great Depression, which we operated straight through. Last year, Formica successfully marketed a high-protein whole wheat product to a school program manufacturer that was distributing to over 267 school districts on the East Coast. We invested a half a million dollars in equipment and facility to support this increase in business. As the price of commodities jumped, especially flour, and we had to pass these costs along to the manufacturer, uh, the cost of producing these healthier, pro healthier products outstripped the already strained school budgets, and schools canceled the program. As a result, I had to lay off many employees, try to recoup the uh, cost associated with this lost contact. Other bakers have had similar experiences trying to provide healthy, low-cost meals to schools. High food and commodity prices have caused many factors, caused by many factors, including increased worldwide demand, a weakened dollar, adverse weather conditions such as last year's drought in Australia. We can't control them. We can't control the weather. We can control government programs such as the ethanol program, which distorts the marketplace by subsidizing crops for fuel versus food. Also in our control are government programs to pay farmers not to farm land. On behalf of my customers, my employees, my family, and my community, I ask that you consider and adopt the American Bakers Association action plan to ease the pressure on our food stocks. Number one, the ABA urges Congress to ease ethanol mandate 
by immediately waiving the renewable fuel standard. That coupled with eliminating the import tariff and the blender's credit on ethanol will allow our country to make progress towards renewable fuels, which we support wholly, but not at the, at the price of sacrificing food stocks. At, the, at this time, the worldwide food shortages, why is the government continuing to incentivize corn for ethanol and not corn for food, for food uses. The U.S. has a finite number of acres to use for farming and fuel crops have taken over many acres that were previously used to grow food. Where will the land come from to grow more crops to meet ethanol mandates? U.S. crop land is already stretched to the limit. The ABA urges Congress to consider the needs of consumers when supplies of wheat and other commodities drop to dangerously low levels. Historically, U.S. wheat stocks have averaged a three-month supply. Current estimates have our wheat stocks down to 24 days, which means there's 24 days worth of wheat based on our present demand with an ever-increasing worldwide demand, the lowest amount since 1948. While recent USDA reports that the project of wheat plantings will increase by over 4 million acres, the USDA recognizes that any increase will be more than offset by the increased use and trade prospects which this government supports meaning that the more wheat entering the food chain that we're going to be projected this year will do little to alleviate the current food crisis, let alone return us to the historical average stockpile, which was our cushion for bad weather. All of these assume normal weather patterns, but as farmers can tell you, I'm sure they can, there's no such thing as a normal weather pattern. In fact, in March of 2007, the USDA projected similar positive outlooks, but that Easter, Weekend, a heavy freeze hit the wheat belt and devastated much of the anticipated crop. Unfortunately, our margin for error is gone. And lastly, the ABA urges Congress to address the increasing pressure on available farmland in the U.S. Currently, 34.6 million acres of U.S. cropland lay idle through a conservation reserve program, a noble cause. A significant portion of CRP acreage is located in large wheat-producing states. ABA believes that as much as one-third of the acres under contract for CRP could be returned production without sacrificing the environmental goals.